Good evening ladies and gentlemen, first before we even get into the video, I want to tell you all that I have released my first ever book, that's right, a book of poetry is out now on Amazon, you can go buy it, I have self published it, I want you to buy it, I want you to leave feedback, I want you to read it, you know, do whatever you need to do, and I'll keep shilling this book for the next few months or so while, you know, we, while I start getting sales from it, hopefully, you know, hopefully y'all start buying. Uh, I want you to buy it, so please. Help me make some money, <laughs> you know. It's not going to come from YouTube for quite a while, so help me make some money by using my actual talent as a writer. So, I'm probably a hack, but it's okay. I want people to buy my book. I want people to read what is out there, and I think there's 143 of you, so 143 of you should be able to get up and go buy my book. Yeah. Ebook is a 41 page um, thing. I, I think I messed up the ebook format and the actual paperback is 101 pages as expected as I wanted it to. Um, with, included it with a forward and then a hundred poems. My first hundred poems. Some of them are a little bit raunchy. Some of them are a little bit depressing. Some of them are a little bit joyful. Some of them are a bit thoughtful. Um, it just, you know, again, it depends. Uh, but that's uh, that's what I wanted to get into. Now, let's get into it with the video that you came here for. Alas, we have awoken with college football this early. It's not midnight. It's not past midnight. Yes, I know. Um, I wanted to get this out before midnight, so that's what we're going to do tonight. BYU is currently beating South Florida 28-6, and right now, as it stands, Arizona is losing 24-10 to Oregon. So, again, I think both of those teams, they are going to take care of business, and it seems like that is going to happen. Both, Arizona, both Oregon and BYU are going to take care of business. But let's talk about today. Today, a lot happened. A lot happened. The voodoo of college football continues to it, it continues to make us matter. It, it makes us even crazier. Like we're sitting here, we're thinking, you know, it's gonna be a simple week. No, no, not at all, man. Not at all. Um, let's get started with Notre Dame, Wisconsin. So Jack Cone gets hurt. You know, it it's like ten to ten at one point, and you know, Jack Cone gets hurt. Um, he's, I think he's going to be all right. So, but any in any case, Drew Pine, the backup comes in, leads the offense effectively, and then Tyree with a big punt return touchdown. You know, it was like 13 to 10 at one point. Wisconsin had the lead, and it was just it just got rougher from there for the Badgers. Like the Badgers, you know, Graham Mertz looked awful out there. He starts throwing big sixes to Notre Dame's defense like it's a giveaway. Free giveaway, free touchdowns. Here, take it. Here, take the ball. Take it. And so Wisconsin gets dominated in Chicago. They're probably dropping out the top 25 anyway. They should they should have already done that. But it's okay. It's okay. How about my Longhorns? Oh, yes. My Longhorns. Yes. KC Thompson, baby. He threw six touchdowns. He won. Well, actually, he threw for five and ran for one. And B. John, you know, continued to dominate out of the field. Him and Roshan Johnson, one-two punch. You know, the, the Horns offense is looking, you know, very, very... It's looking like the offense that should have, you know, did some damage, way more damage against Arkansas a couple weeks back. But that didn't happen, obviously. Look, and, you know, Texas Tech wasn't really no slouch or anything, you know. They do have a good win with, they, you know, the, the Red Raiders have a good win against Houston. But, you know, other than that, you know, I, I was very surprised that Tyler Shaw, you know, transferred over to Texas Tech. So I'm like, wow, wow, why is he here? And then he got hurt, and so Columbia came in. And, you know, of course, you know, Texas Tech, Air Raid, they, they, it seems like they've evolved a little bit with their Air Raid. That's what I got from them. They evolved a little bit. They start to run the ball more um, with Thompson. 
their, their running back. They started to run the ball more. And the Horns defensive back still got burned. I know somebody pointed out somebody pointed out to me today on Twitter, you know, oh it's just one guy. No, it's the entire defensive backfield. They got burned multiple times. That that still needs some work for the Longhorns. They, that needs some work. Big time. So speaking of Arkansas, you know, if it weren't for a couple mistakes here and there, you know, there was a fourth down and one in which Arkansas, you know, was supposed to go up 20 to nothing, but it, for whatever reason, Arkansas decides to go for it, and they didn't get it. And Texas A&M's defense was able to keep them in this game because Calzada couldn't do anything. Isaiah Spiller couldn't really do too much. I mean, he got a big run in there, you know, a big run for a touchdown in there. But, I mean, really, Arkansas should have won this game by a lot more than what they did. My goodness. You know, to, if it weren't for A&M's defense, this, I mean, I guarantee you Arkansas would have ran all over the Aggies just like they did the Longhorns. I'm telling you that right now. I'm not even, I'm not even lying to you guys. Like I'm telling you, the Hogs ran wild on the Aggies. 20 to 10. A&M's likely dropping out the top 10, of course. And there's going to be a big shakeup in the top 25 this week. There's going to be some big, big shakeups, especially with some other key games here that I'll talk about, you know, running it down after I talk about my main six games here. Oh, Rutgers, Michigan. I, I turned this game off after it was 14 to 3, but then Rutgers came back and it was 20 to 13 at one point. And then Rutgers missed a field goal. And then it was just it was downhill from there. Like Rutgers like man, Rutgers should have had, you know, should have had a better kicker, in all honesty. Revoke whoever's scholarship, you know, whoever missed that kick. It, I don't think it was even that far of a kick. Revoke that man's scholarship. And I'm going to talk about another kicker in a minute here for um, a certain team that beat a certain team today. Oh, boy. Definitely should have revoked this man's scholarship, but I'll talk about him in a minute. Um... Kansas State, Oklahoma State. I was really trying my hardest to find this game. I was, I was searching all over the internet to find this game, you know, because I don't want to pay for ESPN three. But Oklahoma State, they proved me wrong. They, they, I, I thought, you know, I thought that Kansas State, you know, would go a bit there and then, you know, do something to Oklahoma State. Because remember, Oklahoma State had been struggling on offense, but that defense, who boy. We're talking they forced turnovers. We're talking they got they, they they were doing whatever they wanted out there. It was 31 to 13 at one point. I'm telling you, Oklahoma State may be legit. They dominated Kansas State the entire game. And I didn't I don't think I left this game on for very long. I really didn't. I turned it to the Tennessee Florida game at like not even 15 minutes later. Because Oklahoma State was up 28 to 10 at one point. I'm sitting here like I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Oklahoma State proved me wrong. Oklahoma State, you know, they, they definitely proved me wrong. Uh, man, it's going to be interesting to see them against another undefeated Big 12 team that I'll we'll talk about in a minute here next week. Oh, boy. My goodness, though. Uh, speaking of the other Oklahoma, the other elephant in the room, the team that's not number four in the country, somehow, but yet they still are number four in the country. I don't know how. Spencer Rattler has really not looked great at all. And Jared Dagey was even worse. I mean, Dagey was overthrowing guys. You know, I, 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 just, I just don't know. Both these defenses were excellent, though. They were on fire. That is how you play against Spencer Rattler. Keith, and again, West Virginia played a beautiful game until... West Virginia's O-line decided to commit an oopsie and, you know, just mess up a play, a bad snap, force West Virginia to punt back to Oklahoma. Oklahoma drained the clock down, and boom, there you have it. Burkett got it, and, you know, Burkett, you know, made that field goal, and Oklahoma gets to walk off with another victory, and it's quite disappointing to see another Oklahoma victory, you know, that should have been 
a what an Oklahoma loss. This really should have been Oklahoma losing. There is no way. And, oh, and again, you know, West Virginia kept. They just kept on. You know, they self imploded. I, this is the type of stuff I was talking about in, in my preview for last for this week. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. They imploded so hard on defense. They just let Oklahoma walk down the field and kick that field goal. That is not how you do this, Neil Brown. That is not how you do this. You can't do that. They, they were getting after him. But, I mean, that don't matter if they're still moving the ball down the field. S try to swat that ball away. Do something. Like... You got, you got you got people calling for Oklahoma to bench Spencer Rattler already during the game. There were crowd chant sayings, bench Rattler. I don't, I don't get it. West Virginia had this game. They had it. I don't know what their strategy was during this game because my thought process during this entire game was what is going on? With West Virginia, what is what is going on here? What are they trying to do? Because there was there was a couple drives where they wasted a ton of clock, and then there were some drives that didn't make any sense. You know, West Virginia's O line was getting bullied, you know, by Oklahoma's defenders at times, but more so Oklahoma's O line was getting bullied by West Virginia's defenders. Like that was more so what was happening. So you think, you know, Daggy could take advantage? But no. This man keeps overthrowing guys, or penalties keep happening, or something stupid, you know, happens. I, I, I just don't understand West Virginia. They've been blowing it since 87. You know, since that national championship against Notre Dame. Like, we don't talk enough about how much West Virginia messes things up for everybody. We really don't talk much enough about it. We really don't. We need to. We really need to. My goodness. Oh. So let's run down the rest of the top 25, run down some other headlines here. Um, oh yeah, there's a bunch of undefeated teams that I didn't expect to be undefeated. What, what, Wake Forest is undefeated, Boston College is undefeated, SMU beat TCU, the Iron Skillet, they keep the Iron Skillet. Surprising stuff right there, UTSA, unbeaten. Army, still unbeaten. And guess, guess who Army gets to play in a couple weeks? Wisconsin, who looked awful against Notre Dame. Oh boy, it's going to be interesting to see what Army can do against Wisconsin. South Alabama's 3-0. Wyoming, they're 4-0. And, they, and, they, and even Wyoming had a close game with UConn today. Wyoming only won 24-22. But, again... All these teams are undefeated. And then Minnesota just had to come in and lose to Bowling Green. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do that, Minnesota? How do you do that? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Oh my goodness. Speaking of Ohio State here real quick. You know, they, they took care of business against Akron. But Kevon Pope... I, bas I basically think he just quit on Ohio State. He, he said a tweet that said, F Ohio State, which got deleted, you know, later. But people have the screenshots. And um, what what in the world's going on? There was a whole situation on the sideline during the Akron game in which, you know, I guess I don't know what was going on with him. I didn't really read into it. But apparently he, yeah, he basically just quit on Ohio State. I have no idea what this man's problem was. It, it doesn't make any sense. He, we'll, we'll have to see, you know, what in the world happens, you know, as time goes on um, with that. But, again, Ohio State takes care of business. BYU and Oregon are taking care of business right now. Coastal Carolina took care of business. Florida, for the second half at least. The first half was kind of close against Tennessee, but the second half... It took care of business. Penn State took care of business against Villanova. And Alabama, of course, took care of business against Southern Miss. So those teams took care of business. They easily, you know, get themselves they, they easily get to pat themselves on the back and keep moving forward. Now, Nebraska. I, I don't know what's wrong with Nebraska, man. 
Last week they lost to Oklahoma in a heartbreaker. This week they lose to Michigan State in an even funnier way. We're talking a fumble late against Nebraska. Or rather, against Michigan State. We're talking a fumble late. Jalen Reed returned the punt to force overtime. And, you know, Nebraska, you know, just fumbles the ball away. Thus allowing for Michigan State to go ahead and win this game in overtime, go to 4 0. Scott Frost, it, it, it's time, Nebraska fans. It's time to face your destiny. It's time for you to get a new coach because Scott Frost ain't it. And this man was making the most exasperated faces on the sidelines. Like, there were there were a couple of times I saw his face on the sidelines. He was just so exasperated. He was just so bewildered at what he saw. I don't blame the guy. I don't blame him. Like, this Nebraska team just just continues to blow away. They, they continue to blow my mind every week in how incompetent they are. You know? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. But what I do get is Georgia. Georgia didn't have to do this to Vanderbilt like that. They put up 62 points. Vanderbilt only had 77 yards of total offense. Four first downs. Four. Georgia had eight touchdowns. Vanderbilt only had four first downs. This is insanity. My goodness. I'm telling you, again... And we'll talk about Clemson in a moment as I get back, as I get over to um, the other rest of my notes here. But again, Georgia, Georgia looking like number one out here. This don't make no sense. This don't make no sense here. And their offense, you know, they finally decide to become explosive against lesser opponents. But this, this doesn't make any sense, man. Are you really telling me that Georgia could be, you know, saying, hey, yo, national championship, where you at? Come here. Like, like to hold you for a little bit. You know, hold on to you and win you. Win you for the CFP national championship. I like to punch my ticket real quick. I like to punch my ticket, go all the way, and win the CFP. That's what George is trying to say. I, 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 I don't know. This defense for Georgia is just out of this world, man. There's no way. There's no way that Vanderbilt really only put up 77 yards of offense, but they did. They did. And speaking of things that have no way of happening, here's some referee voodoo. I thought the Auburn voodoo, you know, was bad, but this is a all-time low. I thought we were done with the ref ball shenanigans. We're not because there was a catch that was not supposed to be a catch against Georgia State and yet Auburn got that voodoo working. They got that voodoo magic working. You know they had already benched Bo Nix, put in TJ Fidley and Auburn's able to come out with the victory against Georgia State. Like Georgia State was up 24 to 12 at one point. Doesn't make any sense. I hate it when I hate the Auburn voodoo. Like, y'all think the Clemson voodoo is bad? The Auburn voodoo is a different animal. Like, you know, the luck of the the luck that Auburn has gotten over the past decade at times has really, really been something. Um so there, there was a little bit of a scare Friday night for Fresno State against UNLV, but they were able to put them away. You know, they only won by eight, but it's okay. UNLV is not good, you know. But you know, Hainer and company were able to put away the Rebels of UNLV. Iowa had you know a scare with Colorado State as well, but they bounced back, put up like 24 straight points on the Rams, and were able to put you know Colorado State out of their misery in the second half. So, kudos to Iowa for getting things done. Their matchup with Penn State in a couple weeks will prove to be spicy. Very, very spicy. And we'll go on to the ACC here because we got Coastal Chaos, baby. We got Coastal Chaos, and we got a, 
of elimination. Another elimination. Yes. Yes, we have a we have two eliminations actually. Um Georgia Tech. That defense was legit. Remember against Clemson, they only allowed 14 points, and you know, their offense just didn't get the work. You know, they didn't get it done against Clemson. Well, they got it done against North Carolina. They got it done. Uh, I'm I'm was sitting here like, whoa, where was this Georgia Tech team a couple weeks ago against Clemson? They were they were putting into work. That defense for Georgia Tech is scary good. And it looks like they have some pieces together that were able to just dominate North Carolina. We're talking Sam Howell didn't know what to do out there. My goodness, man. My goodness. And Clemson, congrats. You get to join Iowa State who lost to Baylor on a pick late. You, you guys get to join Iowa State in your destination, your final destination, which is elimination from the college football playoff contention. Congrats, you guys did it. It only took overtime. If it weren't for that kicker done for NC State, who missed like three field goals, and I think an extra point too, you know, I, I, I again, we got to start revoking some of these kickers' scholarships. This don't make no sense, man. How do kickers miss like this? It, I mean, in all honesty, Clemson was just getting outclassed out there. They looked awful. Uli Lakalele was just not himself, you know, he wasn't really looking too good, he was just throwing bad passes, he got a bad pick in there as well, and NC State finally said, you know what, we're going to finish this off in overtime, huge touchdown in overtime, and then, you know, the, the play that stopped Clemson on a fourth down, and the defense was able to come up with a huge stop on fourth down in the second overtime, it's, it's the, remember the overtime rules have changed a little bit you know you know, have to go for two and you're like the second overtime and then they do like two point tries after that to make overtime shorter um, but Clemson yeah it's not it's not the year for the Dabo not the year for Dabo man it's okay it's okay Tigers you guys can still win the ACC maybe maybe yep but you have two losses Iowa State, you know, finally, you know, the, the, finally for the Cyclones, their CFP ambitions were dashed by Baylor. Baylor is now 4-0, Oklahoma State is 4-0, and that sets up something huge next week. Oh boy, oh boy, it's going to get really interesting now. It's going to get really interesting you know, now that we've got some teams that are starting to separate for the pack, and now we have... You know other teams that are just kind of there they were they were there they thought they were going to be hot stuff this year but now they're not Ohio State you know they they obviously have problems if players are basically quitting on them um, Georgia Tech you know was able to put in a, a scare against Clemson after Clemson had already gotten dominated by Georgia and finally NC State was able to put the dagger at them Iowa put the dagger in it at Iowa State already, but Baylor was able to put them six feet under. Put them six feet under. They're gone. You no longer have to worry about Brock Purdy and Brees Hall. You know, you no longer have to worry about Matt Campbell preaching that Iowa State is gonna win. They're gonna win the Big Twelve. They're gonna go to the CFP. Oh my goodness. You can put you can put a nail in that. You can put the nail in the coffin, put them six feet under, it's done. And now we got now we got some more intrigue, you know. What what is the what in the world's gonna happen next week? Because next week gets even weirder. Um, there's gonna be a lot of games for me to talk about next week, and I don't even I don't even know I don't even know how to go about them. But there is one more that I do have to talk about, and that will be that you know that game is gonna be big for next week. It's gonna be late next week, so of course. We're gonna have another. We're gonna have another game. Um, another. Another. What should we call it? Another recap after like midnight. So you know that I'll talk about that game in my what week five preview. Yeah, week five. So I'll talk about that on Monday or Tuesday or whenever you know whenever I decide to put that out. But again, um, as I said at the beginning, go ahead. Please take a look 
at my book. I will link it down in the description so you guys can you know, just go ahead, get the buying, help me make some money, do all that good stuff. And we're getting close to October, so that means another channel update will be happening, and some other things um, will be happening as well. Like yeah, um, yeah, the um, the uh, what you call it, the arena football indoor football update that will be happening of course you know the nfl videos the recaps the previews those will continue to move on strong all of the college football previews those will continue to move on strong as well in the recaps so you know, that that will be for the channel update on october the first so i will see you all then you know i'll see you all again soon actually not 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 then i'll see you all again soon for the next video and again like share comment subscribe do all that good stuff click the notification bell stay tuned for more i'll see you again very very soon good night everybody